bitter heart causes muddy waters. Most of us have no idea how deep and how strong the authority is that we are giving the enemy through our bitterness, hatred, anger, jealousy, strife, judgmental attitudes, fear, anxiety, um, unforgiveness towards yourself, etc. All these things are emotional sins, emotional issues, which we oftentimes never give the full weight of because we don't even consider them as serious as the physical things such as don't commit adultery, don't steal, don't lie or whatever. But these emotional sins, I want to submit to you, oftentimes have consequences much worse than any other kind of sin. This is perhaps the reason for why Yeshua placed so much emphasis on the condition of the heart, where he would, for example, say, oh, you've heard that it was read, don't commit adultery, and that's a good thing. But I tell you, whoever looks at a woman of lust has already committed adultery in his heart. And so he's saying that, yeah, the action is bad, but I'm telling you that what's going on in your, your emotions, your heart, etc., is just as bad. And in some cases, could even be worse. Romans 14 verse 23 tells us that whatever proceeds not, not from faith is sin. Whatever you are doing in a place of doubt or in a, in a place of unbelief, that is sin. It's the same thing. Sin can be either a lawlessness to, or, or disobedience to instructions of the Father, or as according to 1 John 3 verse 4, or according to Romans, sin can be because of our unbelief. Unbelief is sin. And not believing what God has said, despite of what He's done for us, despite of this amazing world we can see around us, despite of all the evidence that He has placed in our lives and around us, yet we still don't believe. We can believe that He will give us eternal life and salvation and He'll save us from eternal death, but we can't believe that he'll heal us. We can't believe that he loves us. We can't believe that he forgives us. We can't believe what he says about us. Did we say we believe salvation? And it's just like the Israelites who very often times they would believe God and, and, and praise God for splitting the red the sea for them. But they will they won't trust God for a little manna from heaven, for their basic needs and our basic needs include emotional healing, emotional steadfastness, not being tossed and torn in the wind, but being stable in our belief, faith in Yeshua. And so Yeshua said a few really crazy things about bitterness and unforgiveness in our heart. He said, because of this, I say to you, whatever you ask when you pray, believe that you receive it and you shall have them. And whatever you, whenever you stand praying, if you hold whatever against anyone, forgive so that your father in heaven shall also forgive your trespasses. But if you don't forgive, I tell you, neither shall your father in the heavens forgive yours. And so we see that Yeshua, he says, hey, you know, you go and you pray and you lift up your prayers and Father is going to hear you if you offer it up in faith and belief. You believe him. You believe he's going to hear you and you coming in to his courtroom in faith. But then he says something really interesting in the very next verse that is connected. And he said that you need to make sure that when you come before your father in that place, that your heart is clean, that you don't have any unforgiveness against a brother or sister, because if you do, your father in heaven cannot and will not forgive you. So he's saying that if you have unforgiveness in your heart as you're sitting right there, your father who is in heaven cannot forgive you of your sins. No matter how much you pray, no matter how much you beg him, no matter how much, if you have unforgiveness in your heart towards anyone else, I don't care how much, what they did to you. I don't care how hard it is to forgive. It doesn't matter. And God doesn't care because in light of what Yeshua did for us, we don't have an excuse to have any form of unforgiveness in our heart. 
No matter what that person did to you, you have got no excuse in light of what he, Yeshua, did for you when you were spitting in his face in your sin. And so this means that we need to walk as he walked, where he was hanging on that cross and he said, Father, forgive them. They, they spit on me. They, they, they want to throw rocks at me. They want to they kill me, Father. But Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And I want to submit to you that last part, they know not what they do, is the same today. These people who come up against us and do these things to us and it causes us to spring a, a heart of hatred in us. Those people, you cannot have hatred towards them because they know not what they do. People are controlled and inspired by the demonic. Our battle is not against flesh and blood. Our battle is against principalities and higher powers of this dark age. And so because of this, that means that you can't be angry at the person. You need to make the distinction because Satan wants you angry at the person. Satan wants you to think it's your husband. If Satan wants you to think it's your daughter, whatever, whoever it is, Satan wants you to think it's them. It's not them. They don't have a guard. They've got their guard down because their relationship with God isn't good. And so Satan has come in and Satan is trying to work through them to get to you, to get a spring, a root of bitterness in your heart so that you can't get to God anymore, so that he can get between your relationship with God by getting in between your relationship with your daughter or with your child or whoever it is that has hurt you. So Satan has got a big plan here, which we need to see and stop hating people. Stop hating the person. Hate the demonic influence behind it, but don't hate the person because they've got no idea what they're doing. And that's why Yeshua said that. He said, don't, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. They're being influenced by Satan. Satan put Jesus on the cross. He put Yeshua on that cross. It was Satan's plan all along. But God was just like, uh, I've got a plan. I'm one step ahead, Satan. You see, but we need to understand, brothers and sisters, first, and it's going to make things so much easier to forgive. It's not them. We need to lift them up to Father to get healed and delivered from whatever is uh, God oppressing them for them to do such a thing to us. And I'm, I'm talking about the bad stuff. I'm talking about the molestation. I'm talking about the rape. I'm talking about the, the betrayal. I'm talking about that stuff. It is not, it is not, it is not them. It is the enemy. And so if you want to get healed from your sickness, if, if you want to minister healing, it's important to understand that, man, you cannot get healed. It is impossible. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. It is impossible to get healed permanently if you have unforgiveness and bitterness in your heart. Unforgiveness towards yourself. Unforgiveness towards others. Fear, worry, all these things. You, it's going to cause you to get sick. It's going to cause you to stay sick. When the Pharisees came against Yeshua and they persecuted him by saying, Oh, who are you to tell someone to be forgiven? You know, who are you? You are making yourself equal with God because only God can forgive. And Yeshua said, what is the difference for me to say, be forgiven or be healed? While he was speaking to this, to the, to the sick man. And so Yeshua makes an important connection. He says there is a connection between forgiveness and healing. He's saying that it's the same thing. Every single time you get healed or someone gets healed, it's actually forgiveness from the father taking place in that person. That is what is happening. Yeshua is telling everyone time someone gets healed. Yeshua is saying, be forgiven. Because right here, he said, there's no difference for me to say be forgiven or be healed because it's the same thing. And this is why God cannot heal you if you've got unforgiveness towards someone else. Therefore, God cannot forgive you. And so therefore, you cannot get healed. James 5.16 says, Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Righteous means to be in right standing with God. And so he's saying, pray for each other, confess your sins to one another so that you can be healed. So in contrast, if we don't confess our sins to one another, if we don't forgive, healing will not come. And so he further goes to say that it's the prayer of the righteous that has great power. Righteous means right standing with God. So in other words, 
If we are not in right standing with God, our prayer will not have power. And so I want to submit to you that you are not, you cannot be in right standing with God if you have unforgiveness towards someone else. Therefore, God cannot forgive you. So now because God cannot forgive you because of your unforgiveness for someone else, you're not in right standing with God. And your prayer will not be heard. Your prayer will not have power. Because you need to be at peace with all men. You need to forgive all men. And so how many times can we forgive someone? I mean, man, if they've hurt us and we forgive them and they hurt us again, if we forgive them and they hurt us again, we forgive them and they hurt us again. And it's this whole cycle, cycle, cycle. And it never ends. Like, are we going to have to at some point cry, God, when are we going to, when can we now stop forgiving? Because we're tired of forgiving. Peter asked the very same question to Jesus, to Yeshua. And he said, then Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times. Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but 70 times seven. And so in the words of Yeshua, there's no excuse for how many times someone has done you wrong. It doesn't matter how bad it is, how long it's been going on, how much times it goes on over and over and over again. It is that is irrelevant. You turn the other cheek and you forgive. You show grace and mercy over and over and over again. Brother and sister, listen to me. This is important to understand. The person who's hurting you is obviously got not got a good relationship with the father. And the way that we see people, and I've seen it over and over again, the way we see people come to repentance who are hurting us in that way is by forgiving them over and over and over again and showing them the mercy that Yeshua shows us. Because what it brought you to Jesus, what brought you to Yeshua is his grace and mercy. His forgiveness when he said, you know what, you've got sin on you. You've you've done me wrong by sinning, even though I died for you. Yet I show mercy over and over and over again for you in your sin. By doing that, Yeshua brought you to repentance. You came and you saw the love of Yeshua in that moment. And that is what brought you to him. So what if you walking out Yeshua to the other person over and over and over forgiving, no matter how much wrong they did to you, no matter what they did to you, showing that endless love and mercy, just like Yeshua shows walking as Yeshua in that way. What if that will have the same effect as it did on you? What if that will bring that person to repentance? That is the thing that's going to save them. And you not forgiving them is literally the thing withholding salvation from them. You see, brother and sister, why suddenly this has become so weighty? It's because salvation is on the line. This is why God says, I can't forgive you if you don't forgive someone else, because it's your unforgiveness that will keep them from me, is what God says. You see, brother and sister, this is so deep. This is so important. You cannot afford to have unforgiveness. And so it is important to understand that if no matter how long we've held, held unforgiveness, no matter how long we have have refused to forgive. Yeshua says something amazing. God tells us that it's never too late. 1 John 1 verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us as our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All unrighteousness will be forgiven. All sin. He is and it says he is faithful and just to forgive you if you confess it and come in repentance, faithful and just. That means that we can come and confess in freedom, forgive in freedom and then say, Father, thank you. And we can know for certain for 100 percent with all we have, we can believe and know and have faith that he forgives us and we are immediately, immediately in a place of right standing with him. It's like that. How glorious is our father. And so on top of all of this, it's very important to understand that there is a difference between emotional and intellectual forgiveness. You can forgive someone intellectually from the mind. I can say, oh, I forgive the person, but never forgive them truly from the heart. And I found this to be the case more often than not, where people would say, oh, yeah, I know about this. I know this. I, what I, we just talked about, it's I get that. I, I don't have any unforgiveness. And then when we start talking about the situation, all that comes out of their mouth is hatred towards that person. And we start to suddenly see that, yeah, intellectually, you've convinced yourself that you've forgiven them. 
But truly, you haven't. From your heart, you haven't. You still have such bitterness in your heart. And one of the reasons we can taste this to see is ask our, ourselves very honestly, if I was to go and pray right now and ask Father to incredible, give this person incredible blessing and, and all that, and we can do it without any bit of us rebelling against that prayer, then we probably have forgiven from the heart. But if there is even a little tiny bit of our heart that doesn't want that person to be blessed, that doesn't want that person to be prospering, then there's something wrong. And so I want to ask you, even no matter what you feel, if there is someone right now as I'm speaking that the Father's bringing to mind and He will bring them to mind right now. If there is someone in your mind right now that the Father's bringing to mind, you need to come right now and forgive them. You haven't forgiven them yet and it's time to let loose. It's time to let go. And so I want you to pray with me this. So Father, we come before you right now, Father. And we come with our unforgiveness, Lord. We have hold on to this for way too long, God. We have, Father, this person, God, has hurt us. This person did these things to us, God. And I forgive him. I forgive her, Lord. I thank you, God, for freedom, Lord. I release them. Father, I say, no more will I hold on to that. No more will, will I allow that to control me, Father. I know, Lord, it is only keeping me back. And I let it go. And I thank you for your freedom. In the name of Yeshua, I mean. I want you to continue again to put this video off, get on your knees before Father and pour out your heart about everything they did to you. Bring it before Father and forgive them truly from the root, from the deepness of your heart. And if the Father shall lead you, I would encourage you to also call that person if it's possible. And no matter what their response is, no matter what they will say, no matter what their what they would say, just say, just tell them, I forgive you. I'm sorry that I had unforgiveness towards you. And that place of humility coming before them in that place, Father will honor that and Father will heal you in that place. If you want me to continue making these videos and even more of these, as I transition to full-time ministry, you can support me by going to riseonfire.com slash partner. And uh, you can back the ministry and uh, allow us to, to reach more and do this more often to edify the body of Christ. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video.